going on, friends? What is it about Harley Davidson that makes it so special? What makes people spend the big bucks to obtain a Harley Davidson when there's a lot of other motorcycles out there that are maybe arguably more reliable and they're definitely cheaper? But for some reason, everybody keeps coming back to Harley Davidson. They'll buy Harleys, they'll buy several Harleys in their lifetime, paying the big bucks, putting the money into them, paying that expense for service and parts and everything else that goes along with owning a Harley Davidson when you could have bought a cheaper motorcycle to begin with. Maybe your grandpa owned a Harley Davidson, maybe your dad did, and you're just kind of carried on down the line with their Harley or a new bike of your own. Harley Davidson just offers something up that no other motorcycle manufacturer out there has. And I'm not just talking about parts and service. There's just certain things about the motorcycles that just draw you in. Literally, the look of the bikes, the design, the feel, it's just the way they look sitting in the corner of your garage. I don't know of hardly a lot of motorcycles out there that you could really sit out in your garage and just stare at and admire as a piece of art. Harley Davidson goes to great lengths when it comes to designing their motorcycles. The shape of their gas tanks, the way their seats flow, their fenders, the combination of the wheels, everything, right down to the engine. Even the look of the engine is part of the motorcycle. There is not a part on a Harley Davidson that does not get looked at really hard before they decide, okay, this is what we're going to do. And does it work with the rest of the bike? Harley puts exponential hours into the look, design, and feel of their motorcycles. Now, of course, you can make a joke about that and think, say, well, maybe they should put more into R&D in the engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I totally do. But if Harley-Davidson was to put a modern motor into their current cruisers, it arguably just would lose the entire feel. You would lose the entire motorcycle at that point. Guys, please don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, case in point with Harley-Davidson's design was that when it came to the twin cam engine, they wanted to add an oil cooler to it. But the design, the design said, absolutely not. We are not gonna put an oil cooler on there. It will ruin the look of the bike. Now, lo and behold, now we have the Milwaukee 8. They come from the factory on the cruiser models with an oil cooler but they didn't just stick it out front like a radiator. They didn't stick it on the side. They actually worked it in between the down tubes of the frame. And honestly, you don't really notice it unless you're absolutely looking. This is kind of the thought that Harley Davidson puts into everything that goes onto their bikes. Now, when it comes to the engines, yes, we could argue that, yeah, they're archaic, they're antiques, whatever. Say what you want about them, but they work. And not only do they work, they put the power to the ground. Now, it really wasn't until the Milwaukee 8 and the Twin Cam 103 that we were starting to get some really decent power output right out of the factory. Now, granted, every Harley-Davidson needs a tune, it needs an air cleaner, and it needs a good set of exhaust to really kind of open it up and get the best, most potential power that you could get out of the stock cams and the stock setup. But once you do that, you're making pretty decent power. Not only are you making pretty decent power, here's the difference in the Harley-Davidson engine. The Harley-Davidson engine actually puts the power to the ground. You don't have nearly as much power loss from the crankshaft going to the rear wheel because one, Harley-Davidson uses a belt. Back in the day, they used a chain. You're getting pretty much all that power and torque to the ground. Now, with the, man with the metric manufacturers, yes, the, chain the shaft drive was... Yeah, shaft drive was low maintenance, no maintenance really, other than a fluid change, but it didn't have the same riding, like running down the road characteristics. It didn't have the same dynamics and feel. And not only that, you lost a lot of power between the crankshaft and the rear wheel. With the Harley Davidson, you roll on the throttle, you feel all that torque coming through your chest. You feel that pulling you down the road because you're putting the power to the ground. And that is probably one of the biggest things that sets a Harley Davidson apart is that they actually get the power to the ground. They do it better than any other engine out there. Yes, Harley Davidsons are expensive. They cost more than just about any motorcycle out there, except maybe the Indian today. Some of Indian's models are actually more expensive than Harley Davidson, if you can believe that. But when it comes to the Harley, yes, you pay a lot up front, especially for a new one. You're still going to pay even more for a used one versus any other manufacturer, except maybe Indian at this point. But it's kind of worth it to pay a little bit more up front 
because as I've mentioned a lot of times, you can rebuild these bikes infinitely. The parts are easy to come by and you're not having to rob a donor bike to get parts to maybe hopefully fix the one that you have. You can go out and buy brand new parts right off the shelf, even for engines that have been out of production for years. And that is one benefit to Harley Davidson is that they really didn't make a whole lot of changes to the engines over the years, maybe some minor updates here and there, but for the most part, for an engine's manufacturing run, they stayed pretty much the same which makes it really easy for you to find parts out there on the aftermarket if the engine's out of production. Even if the engine's out of production, you, some parts you can still obtain from Harley-Davidson. Now this part about Harley-Davidson is completely subjective, but if you ride Harleys, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. It kind of goes back to the old saying that if I have to explain, you wouldn't understand. And trust me, I never really understood that until I rode Harley-Davidson's myself and when I started riding them, I was like, the light bulb went on. Aha, I get it now. It's that vibration. It's that feel. It's that connection to the road that a Harley Davidson gives you. They're very mechanical. They're kind of raw, real feeling. They're not super smooth. I mean, don't get me wrong, Goldwing, awesome motorcycle. One of the best handling, most powerful big bikes out there. But running down the road, yes, it feels good to be in the wind, but you just don't feel as connected to that motorcycle and to the road like you do with a Harley Davidson. With a Harley, you got the vibration pulses. You've got just that, that feel all throughout the bike and the way they track down the road. I'm not saying it's a great thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying you have to experience it to really understand what it means. Now, one of the best parts about a Harley Davidson is that you can buy one of these bikes and you can keep it forever. And what I mean by that is, I'm not talking about just getting parts for the engine, but if you have a certain style of Harley Davidson, whether you have a Sportster, a Dyna, a Softail, or one of the new Milwaukee 8 engines, or one of the touring bikes, and by say new Milwaukee 8, I mean like the Softail Milwaukee 8, you can literally take a Harley Davidson, any model, and make it anything you want. You could take a fully dressed bagger and strip it down to a cruiser if you wanted to. You could do that. You could take a cruiser, you could take a Dyna and turn it into a full on touring machine. You can literally do this with any Harley Davidson model, even a Sportster. A Sportster can be anything you want. You can make a cafe racer, you can make a touring bike, you can make it just a stripped down, laid back cruiser. Any Harley Davidson model you could do this with. So honestly, you don't necessarily have to buy a brand new bike unless you just absolutely want to. With a little thought, a little creativity, and some elbow grease, you can make any Harley Davidson model exactly what you want. You get bored with it? Don't sell it, change it. Especially with the engine. Down on power, there's so many parts out there. You could rebuild the engine from the crank up. You could throw some cylinders on, throw some cams in it, get some more power out of it. You make a hot rod bagger out of anything when it comes to a Harley Davidson. The, the potential is just, it's, it's limitless when it comes to these bikes. And the availability of the parts and accessories is out there to do that. And it can be easily done. Now, probably one of the most, I guess, another subjective part about what makes Harley Davidson so popular is just the nostalgia behind it. Harley Davidson is absolutely everywhere. And I know all the jokes out there about, oh, it's a clothing company or it's a housewares company, whatever you want to call it. But the culture is just everywhere when it comes to Harley Davidson. It's not just here in the U.S. It is absolutely worldwide. And not only that, Harley Davidson has definitely been doing something right for years because they keep selling these bikes like, like they're hotcakes. I mean, now granted, Harley Davidson's never going to get back to the days back in the Evo where you, you go into a dealer and there were, there were no bikes. There was absolutely none to be had. And if you ordered one, you might be a year, maybe even two years out, depending on what you ordered. Those days are gone for Harley Davidson. But even today, Harley Davidson's are still extremely popular. And even I, yeah, I know there's probably arguably better machines out there, but it doesn't say Harley Davidson on the tank. That's basically what it comes down to. And don't get me wrong, the metric manufacturers, they tried very, very hard for years to copy Harley Davidson. I mean, their bikes were almost literally uh, Japanese clones of Harley Davidson's but they just quite weren't Harleys. I mean, they had V-twin engines. Yes, they vibrated a little bit. They sounded close to a Harley, but running one down the road, yeah, they were good handling bikes. They, they stopped well, they had decent power, 
but they just weren't that look and feel that you got from a Harley Davidson, especially if you rode them back to back. Now, don't get me wrong, some people preferred the smoothness of the metric cruisers compared to kind of the Ross and Bliss of the Harley Davidson, but you know what? That's fine. That's everybody's own opinion. What do you like best? But obviously, Harley Davidson has been winning at this cruiser game for years and years and years, and they're continuing to do so. Are they living off their name, or are they still doing the things that the people want? That's kind of up to you to make the judgment call on that. But anyhow, guys, I want your opinion on Harley. Why do you feel that Harley Davidson is so popular? What makes you and others spend the money to go after the Harley Davidson? Is it because it's a higher quality machine? Is it because it's what you've always owned? Maybe your grandparents owned it? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments. But anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. But until next week, guys, you stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge those cars. I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.